Okay, Pangea 2, here we go. Here's where we stopped. Um, the theory of uh, continental drift and its hypothesis. Remember that with a theory, I can't 100% prove it. Um, it's just the most accepted concept within science. Uh, because I cannot go into the mantle in reverse time, these are the things that through scientific discovery and investigation, the parts that we can prove support the theory and the parts that um, aren't necessarily proven are logical enough and accepted enough within the scientific community. So the theory of continental drift was initially proposed in 1915, but he didn't publish it until 1920. Uh, this is that supercontinent of Pangaea saying that it supposedly broke up uh, roughly 200 million years ago and that the continents drifted or moved to their current positions. Um, some continents plowed through the ocean crust. Um, plow means that it is a slow and forceful movement. Uh, this movement through the ocean crust is because the masses that moved through were more dense than the ocean. So this would have been extremely dense continents. Uh, more of the continental drift evidence is the geological or geographical fit of South America and Africa, that the fossils match across the ocean, that the rock types and the structures also match across the ocean. And then this one is new. We didn't talk about this in the last video, but it's ancient glacial features. And what that means uh, is, we'll get to it in a second. I, I rush, I rush. So let's go and look at the fit. So the in the picture over here to the right, we have parts that overlap, and then we have parts where there's a gap. Where it's overlapped, that's probably a mountain range. Uh, and if the places where there's a gap, it may have been um, a, not a freshwater, but a saltwater mix where the water would have come in kind of like a lake. Uh, these fit, the, the tighter the fits, the more close they are, not so much the overlap pieces, but the more close they are. If you look this kind of grayish blue, where's my pen? Let me get my pen. Purple. These places here where it's a lighter blue, those are actually the continental shelves, which allow it to meet up without it overlapping and the places where they match overlap and even gap it's not comparing the actual continents it's looking at their continental shelves so where does the continent start and stop at the fossil uh, both animal and plant remnants that are there uh, these are going to be critical when you go to start putting together your evidence folder for it the south american african lake if you look at the fossils that are there, almost every fossil is found on both of those two. The only one that's not is that uh, Lystrosaurus, and uh, that one actually preferred warmer environments, and the equator would have been about right there. So if you look, most of his movement was in the upper part above that equator line. Uh, but these guys here, the Scolocerisps, I can't even say it right. Um, that is actual like a fern plant and it only would have existed in warm and temperate zones. So Antarctica that's here couldn't have been in its current location and still had these animals here. Um, the, the big fossils here were specifically uh, land animals. They couldn't have swam. They weighed too much. Uh, this guy here, this uh, Mesosaurus, he would have preferred to live close to freshwater access. Uh, he did swim kind of like an alligator does. They can swim, um, but that's not their only mode of transportation. So here's those glacial features. The top picture, um, picture A, is the Pangaea grouping. Um, and then the picture B, or the bottom one, is how they are now. So if I look at India in this picture, and Australia in this picture, and even parts of South America. These places don't have glaciers now. They're much too warm, especially up here in India. They're much too warm to support glacier development because they um, were around at the formation of uh, 
or I'm sorry, when the formation happened, they were close together and clustered near the, the, uh, the bottom. As they moved around, um, some of these places, especially like Madagascar, which is that little island right here, they do have glaciers still there, but because the temperatures in our atmosphere are warming, they are now starting to melt. So, how did people receive this continental drift theory? Um, most of Europe and the Southern Hemisphere, once they saw all the support, were able to accept it and um, kind of move on with it. Uh, the U.S., not so much. Um, they felt that there was a lack of suitable, solid proof for it, and they chose to not see some of the evidence as proof, but more as coincidence, where now most of the, uh, the country of the U.S. as well as the rest of the world have accepted these um, pieces of proof as evidence. Some people I still remain um, conflicted, they feel like this is unresolved because the seafloors aren't fully explored and they're using sonar instead of manpower to visually explore them. Now there's more people because of technology. They're able to send these uh, little tiny scubas down there, little tiny tank, not tanks, um, submarines and go down and look and get a better, closer personal experience. So the supports, this is review. The support for the theory of plate tectonics is that our outer shell is broken into plates that move around on top of uh, the weaker underlying kind of squishy layer. The uh, earthquakes and volcanoes, excuse me, um, erupt and quake close to plate boundaries. There are three types of boundaries. The divergent moving apart, convergent coming together, and transform moving uh, side by side to each other. So these are our tectonic plates on our modern planet. It says modern Earth because this is how the plates are located now. If you look, most of the plates are named after the landmass that they're on top of or underneath. If you remember back to our... Um, or if you've watched ahead, I should say, to the video about uh, subduction and convergent boundaries. Um, poop. This Nazca and South America plate are two places of interest, and then this Arabian, Indian, and Eurasia plate are also very key points of interest. So our geological timeline, um, you may have to pause this here to get the information logged in. The key points that we need to make sure that we have documented is this Paleo-Cretaceous uh, boundary or the KP boundary. This is the Tertiary and the Cretaceous. No. The uh, Cenozoic and Mesozoic time frame. This is where the dinosaurs died out. So if you look at the K boundary here, these are two people's names. That's where they get the K and the T. Uh, this big extinction, if you look at the structure of the bones after more moving towards man and then coming down below, they get much bigger. This is where you have that uh, duck-billed dinosaur and the T-Rex head. Um, so this is one boundary that we need to have, the uh, KP or PK boundary. This is where a meteor happens, so make sure you have a meteor labeled on that line. And then at the end of the Mesozoic, near the Paleozoic era, there is a T and a P boundary, a Permian and a Triassic boundary. This was another place of giant extinction. This is where something happens to the water. Uh, they think that a huge volcanic eruption launched a bunch of sulfur into the atmosphere, messing up the water cycle. So please make sure you get those labeled in. Um, you will need to make a trifold uh, foldable and on the top of your thing is a picture. It needs to be neat and colorful. On the bottom underneath the flap, you need to have three facts. Uh, your three things that you need to look at are Wegener, Hess, and Matthews and Vine. These two, excuse me, these two go together. So don't break them apart. And uh, you can include things about the Mid-Atlantic Ridge with Matthews and Vine. Uh, you can include things with 
Iceland as well. And there is a very short picture. Uh, we'll end on this one because it's kind of neat. This is the uh, Mid-Atlantic Ridge, the mountain range that we can see. And this is a satellite picture. So I hope this helped. We're ending at 10 minutes. This is video two for the um, Pangea. So hopefully you watch the other one. And I'll see you in the hallways.